Hey minions, welcome to Crank It Up. I'm Jim Price, and on this episode of The Gauntlet, I want to talk about Mounty Tornadoes. Smash Up is a game of many things. Area control, tactical play, but it is very much a game of efficiency. Spending the right amount of cards to win one base so that you can sustain yourself for the long haul. Win the war, not just the battle. Because of that, I routinely talk about using opponent power against them, and the Mounty Tornadoes are literally built around this entire concept. Assuming that a player has no specials, I want to win a 25 breakpoint base 13 to 12, just barely edging out an opponent. Or, if I'm going to lose a base, I want them to greatly overpay for first. The Mounty Tornadoes excel at this level of manipulation by adding in their own specials, which have a great deal of phase 3 manipulation. For this team, I actually want to start from the perspective of one of their biggest weaknesses, because it drives their entire strategy. They have no extra minion plays. They have no extra action plays, not counting specials. They have no titans or card draw. Every turn, you are playing one minion and one action, so you need to make them count. You have to do more with less, and that means using your opponent. Very often, I like to break bases by myself. Not necessarily with this combination, because the Mounty abilities literally want opponent on bases. There are still some clever things you can do, however. There's something really satisfying about playing Mounty Tornadoes and winning a base by one power, especially if that power comes from A. Many times, A is the exact power needed to break a base, but you are still winning by a decent margin. But when A is not only the last breakpoint damage, but also the tiebreaker, it's extremely special and drives an opponent crazy, because you can do that again and again. If you can only play one minion per turn, you are going to lose a dogpile race unless you spread out. This is perfect for Mounty Tornadoes. Dudleys have self-propelled movement as long as you have an enemy minion on your target base, and spreading them out ensures that at least one of them will be able to move. Usually, the Northern Mover can move them, but that sacrifices the plus one from Northern Mover which you want for efficiency. And if Dudley doesn't move, you sacrifice his plus one power. But the Monster Tornado can easily move a Dudley so that it can be moved back. Twister can kick a Dudley off, only to have Dudley move itself back on. You can use Dudley to move to a base, use Twister to kick it off because that's still three power, then use Mover Boot to move it back for another two power, then trigger any Northern Movers. Or you can use Twister to kick a minion off a base, and then have Dudley follow it. There are so many options between combining your minions that I love having the chance to decide how I want to manipulate the game state best. Bring them in can permanently increase a minion's power every time it moves. Normally, the Mounties had ways of moving a minion at least once a turn, usually more, but this is an excellent action for Cyclone, which guarantees that it will move every turn. Cyclone can move freely, while Northern Movers buff it further, which for the purposes of bring him in is just like giving it plus one power, only better because it's a permanent power counter. And while this seems like a lot of work, there is a great payoff because of the tornado specials. You can use that power in an overpayment situation, then use picked up to kick him off, increase its power further, and allow it to continue to grow on other turns. In a pinch, you can use over the rainbow to move it to the scoring base, which would also increase its power but the best course of action is to save it with Gone with the Wind. This gives you half the power of Sun Tattoo, but is more easily played and allows a minion with better power and movement potential to survive. When it comes to specials, it really helps that you have Dust Devils, who can help ensure that you are never left off a base. This allows for easy second places. I've already mentioned the three Tornado actions, and I love all of them. But the Mounties also have a decent special in When Calls the Badge. The best part about these specials is that all four give you a chance to play A on an opposing turn, which can really make a difference since you are trying to barely edge out opponents. I normally prefer Mounty Major to be a big drop, which is really easy when the Tornadoes are rearranging minions to maximize his payout. This is especially easy with the Tornadoes, who focus on the movement of lower powered minions. This is one situation where trade wins might actually get some use, because you can swap a Dudley for an enemy minion, then move Dudley over, and use Mounty Major. But, specifically with this team, 
I also like leaving Mounty Major out in play on a different base because he is a great target for Over the Rainbow. Because he scales decently well with low powered minions, which the Tornadoes can move, he can make a great difference. I like the Tornadoes, but they can be power starved. The Mounties greatly solve that problem. Power Poutine is basically an augmentation for this team since it's so easy to have two minions on a base. You have A for further power. IHQ can set up in advance for even more power and plays very nicely with Dust Devils or Twister Consolidation. I already mentioned how Brigham In can be a power counter factory. The Mounties greatly solve what the Tornadoes need while simultaneously giving them more of what makes them work. With this team, it is possible to get an easy second place, steal a base or two, and then explode for a great finish, because you still have whirlwinds. This can be your big final play to get a base by yourself, or seize a key moment. With engine minions like Northern Mover or Monster Tornado, they are going to need to spread out anyway. Normally, a player would try to break those bases quickly, but the Tornado opponent movement makes this difficult. You can continually pull minions off of your engine minion bases as fast or faster than they can play them. It doesn't hurt that the Mounties can mix in a destruction card as well. But where are you moving all these minions? I absolutely love the base support that this team receives. Let's look at the candidates. Dragon's Lair is an excellent base for second place, especially if you don't care about the cards. Worm's Desolation can be purgatory for swarm factions with small minions. Wooden Horse is a 3-2 base. So is the Deep, which Battle Moose can render ineffective. Converted Cave is a 4-3 base. Tornado Alley is another 4-3 base, one of my favorites. There are so many bases that favor a strategic second place. Of the four remaining bases in It's Your Fault, Trailer Park is fantastic for this team, and Oracle of Delphi can provide some much needed card draw. Of the International Incident bases, Doyo is a deceptively fantastic Twister base because Twister can move itself, but still trigger the Doyo to move a different, uncapped power minion. It's also another 3-2 base. Golden Lily is a 3-2 base that can also be a card draw engine, which this team desperately needs. Bastion St. Gervais is a 5-4 base that gives them extra actions. You have a ninja base, perfect for tornado strategies. Twister is great for the squared circle, as it's a way to get back powerful tornado specials without adding power to the base and it's got such a low breakpoint that you can easily move yourself back later to win it outright. You have everything you need for a neutral assist, bases that give you abilities you desperately need, and a fantastic chance of seeing bases that favor easy second places. Knowing the base deck is critical, because not in Kansas can be powerful if you predict what you are likely to receive as the next base. The last time I played this combination, the other player remarked, well that was stupid. I wasn't just playing my faction, it felt like I was playing his as well. But the weakness I mentioned is fairly pronounced, as a bad draw can set you back several turns. I like that you could still manipulate the board in some respect in the meantime, but this team can start very slowly. Fortunately, the high spread of second place bases makes it easier to start slow since you are okay losing on them anyway. As far as other weaknesses, I'm just going to leave this here, don't face this team. Or this team. Mounty Tornadoes can manipulate things in Phase 3, but they are meant to do so deterministically. If your opponent can provide their own specials, then living on the edge and only winning by one power is no longer viable. Anyone who can greatly alter the shape of a base as it's scoring will be a difficult opponent. When you only play one minion per turn, destruction is brutal. Some of the minions can be protected, but not all of them. As the Mounties focus largely on temporary power, you need to find other ways to shield your minions from destruction. I also think that this team suffers against VP manipulation strategies. The star roaming aliens don't really care about winning bases anyway, and they would love the 3-2 bases for the exact same reason. With no extra actions and a reliance on those actions, the Mounted Tornadoes would not want to face minions of Anansi, who can remove any advance received from a convenient second place. But the same lack of extra plays helps them against superhero princesses because the main casualty will be A, unless you load up on Tornado Specials on the same turn. One of the things I love about this tournament is that each team has a set of teams that they would love to face and others that they'd hate to face without much overlap between them. It makes the eventual opponent really exciting for me. What do you think of Mounty Tornadoes? Let me know in the comments. I had a schedule, but let's blow it up. 
Next week, we will take a look at two teams that Father Time 89 somehow managed to predict, and I'm fairly positive that he hacked my files, because one of them should never have been guessed. But I've been dying to talk about at least one of these teams, so what should have been some of the last revealed teams are coming out early. That's it for this team. Thanks for watching. Be sure to like and subscribe. Let's shut it down. <laughs>